Hello the folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome back to Football Manager 2021 Conquering the Euro with Everton. Today it is episode 5 of season 6 and we have got a top of the table clash. It is snowing apparently at Stamford Bridge and we take on Frank Lampard's Chelsea. And then later on in the episode we go away to, I think it's Pride Park still isn't it? Derby County I think still play, yes they do at Pride Park for the fourth round of the FA Cup. And it is fair to say if we can get a win out of today's game. I suppose even if we get a draw, we are certainly in this title race. And it is a title race that is very, very, very tight. I guess you can kind of excuse the fact that both ourselves and Chelsea have played one game less than the rest. But there are seven teams that are within ten points of one another. And it's going to be a very tough one to go and win this year. But I feel like if there is one year that we might well go and win the title, this could be the one. There's no runaway leader really is anyone's to take if they can do well. So a big game against Chelsea today. As you can see, most of the other teams have started to kick off. That's their 23rd game. This Premier League table shows the, the finished article, if you like. But for example, Liverpool are playing their 23rd game against Bournemouth. It's very complicated, but at the end of the Chelsea game, you'll see the full table. So let's have a look at what's happened since the last episode. So in the last episode, we got through the Champions League group. Then we had the draw, and we're playing PSG in the first knockout round, which is going to be really tough. I can't see us getting anything out of it. But then the competitions, the board just wants us to be competitive. And I think that getting through the group stages in a group that included Real Madrid, Lille, and Inter Milan, that's more than what we were hoping for. And really, we're just playing for pride. So if we can go and get a result out of PSG, that'd be absolutely awesome. After that match against Real Madrid, though, we went and lost against Arsenal, unfortunately. It was our first loss in the Premier League since the one against Leeds United. And, to be honest, it was a fairly close game. Arsenal got an early goal, and we struggled to, to get kicking after that. And it was a bit unfortunate, but after that, we've done pretty well. We beat Leicester 2 a little comfortable win against them. 1-0 against Bournemouth. We drew against Sheffield United 1 each. I wasn't particularly happy about this one wants to get three points out of this game. And it's fair to say there are some occasions, the likes of when we played Derby, Villa and against Sheffield United, where we should have really got three points in these games. But then if you were perfect, you'd be pot top of the Premier League every time, wouldn't you? And the reason really we didn't win that game was because Diego Almeida got sent off for the second time this season. His discipline is starting to concern me a little bit because nobody else is really picking up any cards, yet Almeida has been sent off twice. Which is frustrating, and that's probably why we didn't win that game. But we did have a win against Norwich last time out of two goals to one. And also we beat Oldham 2-0 in the FA Cup. We put out a very young side, which played very well. Um, Sam Atkinson and Lorenzo getting the goals there. So because Almeida is suspended for this match, we put Dennis Sicario alongside Ben Godfrey at the back. It's your usual, really. We have sold one player since the last episode, so I will reflect on that just now. Saidu Sanusi has gone to Al Hale in Qatar for £4 million. As I was saying earlier on in the season, he's 30 years of age. He's still a good player, but I want to bring Juan Larios through now. He only had 18 months left of his contract. Really, it's just a case of cashing in. Um, and we have got a few youngsters coming through. I'll just show you a few of those quickly. We've got Henry Lawrence and Livramento who can play there. But we've also got, trying to find him now as I come through, if we go to the one-star players. There we go. We've got Michael Tiel, who's a player who's definitely a breakthrough prospect. He's at 19 years old. Joined us on a free from Dortmund. And he played in the Oldham game. Got a 7.6. Did very, very well, and he's a player we can definitely develop and maybe look to bring on the fringes of the first team next year. So Larios is going to be our, our, our first team player. But as you can see, his average rating over the season has been a 7. One of the standout players in the squad, so nothing to worry about there. Kenneth Taylor and Lewis Bates start in the middle with Robin Vandenberg, Awobi and Satona on the wings with Lorenzo up front. So Reese Nelson, he's starting to come back from injury now. He did play, I think it might have been, was it? yes, it was in the last game against Norwich. He played for 34 minutes. That was his first match in October last year. Just really as a run out. So we might give him another run out today, depending on how things are going. But he's not quite at full fitness yet. And the reason I am playing Vandenberg, again, this is a huge match against Chelsea today. We've got Derby, Derby County later in the episode. And players like Robin will probably rest. But this is a big match, really is against Chelsea I don't want to be too negative, but if we do lose this one against Chelsea, I do struggle to see how we stay in the title race. Um, I'm going to go back to counter-attacking rather than too positive, just because I think that I don't want to commit too much. As much as I like to play how we play against against anyone, 
I think, against Chelsea today. Against the, they're the best defence in the league, but that's been said, we're the second best defence in the league. So, we're doing well. We are doing well with Everton. Again, if we don't win the title this year, I'm not expecting to win it by any means. I'm not... haven't got any expectations. So, don't worry that you think, oh God, look at this Burke. He thinks he's going to win the title, but... We just strive to do as well as we can, and that's what we're doing again this year. We finished in the top four last season. If we can replicate that this time round, that would be excellent. But why not aim high? At the end of the day, the, the club wants us to qualify for the Europa League. I think we're going to be inside that top seven group, so it shouldn't really be a problem. Obviously, to finish in the top six is getting in the Europa League, but um, unless we have some terrible form at some point, I don't think we should have much of an issue. As you can see, it's uh, fairly snowy here. At Stamford Bridge. That could change things I suppose. But uh, Mason Mount. To whoever that is. Mason Mount again. Back to Luis Felipe. Tell you what. Thank God for the commentary on the bottom. Because I'm struggling to see. I don't know about you guys. With the snow on the ground. And that is a lovely goal from Nicolo Barella. Uh, from about 30 yards. Jordan Pickford was going to struggle to get to that one wasn't he. I don't know if. And it, do, it does worry me when you play this sort of formation. Where, not the formation sorry. The mentality. Whether. Maybe we invite too much pressure. I don't know. But if we go 2-0 down here, it feels like we've shot ourselves in the foot a bit. James, good save from Jordan Pickford. Evanson, don't make it too well. We've got to, we'll go to a positive mentality. It's not going to hurt at this point unless we get a goal back straight away here. Vandenberg, lovely ball through to Lorenzo. I thought that was in. I, I, I mean, you could see my fist pump in there. I thought it was one each. I really did think it was one each. We're definitely in this match, actually, if you look at the... The XG, we've definitely had the better chances, so hopefully something can happen before half-time. As you can see, if we lose today's match, we're eight points off our opponents. It's a six-point swing, of course, but it, it would be a very good win to take for us today. Let's see if we can get anything back before the half-time period. Barella to Mason Mount. Can we pinch the ball, potentially? Larios puts the ball out, but only temporarily. Barella back on the ball. Abraham, Rodrigo. Oh, it's 2-0 Chelsea. I guess we we should have expected this, but I, yeah, well, I don't think we're going to come back from this. I guess if we can get one before half time, we can potentially get a draw. But if they make it free here, they have made it free. But I think that whoever that is is offside for Chelsea. But it's not looking great for us. I think we probably need to play like we normally play. Let's play for set pieces because that seems to work a bit more often. We're doing we've been doing some work in training on set pieces, so that might be a sign. But let's just play as we normally do. Let's just see. Yeah, it is offside. Abraham was actually the man who was offside and committed the offence. But we need to start doing something here unless we're, or else we're going to have a real problem. And to be fair, our XG, until Chelsea had the latest shot, um, it was higher. But let's see. Mason Mount into the box. Very nearly 3-0. And if it was 3-0, it really is game over. It might still be. Mount. Good stuff from us. Can Vandenberg get it out again? If it's 2-1 before half-time, you'd give us a chance of nicking a draw. But Vandenberg gets dispossessed. We look very much second best at the moment in this match. Let's thrash the arms, say that we were terrible, and just try and get the players motivated. That's all we can ask at this point and see how well we can do in the second half. Um, let's pass into space. Let's encourage the lads to pass into space. Maybe don't shoot on sight. I don't think that's too wise, actually. But let's see how we get on. Again, we haven't really got anything to lose now. We're 2-0 down. We're going to struggle. We're going to commit our men up front as we always do. We know how to score goals. We've got some good players up front. Let's see what we can do. And if we go and lose 5-0, we're going to lose 5-0. I remember we had a bad game against Chelsea. I think it was in our... It was. It was, it was about this time last season. And we got demolished about 5-0. And it was the catalyst to a real good run of form. But the problem is... After this match, we've got Liverpool and Man City in the league. So, if this wasn't going to break our title run, you know, that, those games against Liverpool and Man City, I think, definitely would. And I would say it definitely is game over now, 50 minutes in. We're 3-0 down against Chelsea. There's no real problem, I don't think. we've Again, we've got time. We've, we've got another season or two. We're doing very well here with Everton. And I did say when I joined, is this the club that's going to win us the title? Questionable, because... We could do with a title at some point. It is season six. I think we did waste the first two years at Nice, to be brutally honest. We just didn't get anywhere with them. But we are going in the right direction with, with um, Everton. So we can't be too hasty. I would just like to, to do a bit better in these sort of matches. But it's not going to happen for you every time. You just have to take that, I suppose. 
Um, we're going to bring Sam Atkinson on for Robin Vandenberg. He's tired. I don't really want to risk Reese Nelson, to be honest. Um, so what we'll do, we'll put Awobi out on the left. Put Lewis Bate in the place of Satona. Do a lot of swapping and changes here, actually. We're going to put... Uh... Yeah, we'll play Sakaria as a Mazala. And bring Pat Mayer on for Deji Satona. And actually... Livramento's quite tired, so we'll make it a triple substitution. We've not really got much to lose at this point. Let's see how we get on. I'd, yeah, I would like to get a goal or two back. If it's 3-2 or 4-2, I can take that. But losing 3-0 and, and not really having any sort of chance up front is, is disappointing, it's fair to say. So we are fourth just about for the moment. Arsenal are actually losing to Brighton, so that's a bit of a shock. But this is a bit disappointing, it is. It's, it's a little bit disappointing. You always hope you can come home from these matches with more. But we just have to shrug it off. Chelsea, the much better team on the day. That's the way it goes. That is the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. And we will have Reese Nelson back for the next few games. So that should help us out a little bit. But as you can see, Liverpool away from home. Man City at home. We're going to do well to get anything out of those sides. But that makes the game against the likes of West Brom, Newcastle, these sides so much more important. But... To be only, I mean, it's 10 points, isn't it? But we've got a game in hand, of course. To be 10 points off the, the top of the league with a game in hand, I'll take that. And if we win our game in hand, we, we go two points clear of Tottenham. So, again, if we if fourth is really solid. If we can do an Arsene Wenger and finish fourth again, I'll be very happy with that. But our attention will now change to the FA Cup. Of course, Derby are a Premier League team. So they could be a bit of a banana skin. Um, I think we went out at this... No, we actually went out in the third round last year. I'd like to go on a cup run. We haven't done it at all in uh, this career mode so far. And we're a very good side. So let's see if we can go and do it. We've got Derby County up next. Can we get through? So I think it'll be the last 16, won't it? Yeah, the last 16. Can we go and beat Derby? Let's find out. Well, as you might expect, we've got a few different names in the squad today. No, nothing too ridiculous, but a few youngsters getting their chance. We've got Cass Cow in goal. Uh, the £12 million pound chap we signed from Saudi Arabia in the summer. And again, he's going to come in for Jordan Pickford in the next few years. But at the moment, he's, he's very much our second choice, and I'm happy with that. We've got Henry Lawrence at right-back, Pat Mayer and Connor Cody at uh, centre-back. We were talking about this kid earlier, Michael TL, who got a 7.6 in the uh, game against Oldham. Let's see how he gets on today. Kenneth Taylor starts alongside Ishmael Gutierrez. He was one of our first signings. I think he was our first signing for Everton. He's not done too badly, but he is a backup player really these days. Sam Atkinson starts at right wing. We've got Russell Lee starting at centre attacking midfield. Again, another decent player. We signed him from Wolves last year. And um, it looks like he's going to be a, a backup player really for us at most. But let's see if he can improve. And we also give Errol McNaughton his first um, start for us. He's a 19-year-old winger can play on either wing. He looks a pretty good player. Let's see how he gets on today. And Lorenzo starts up front for us. Again, it, it's, a, it's an opponent we have to respect. It's a Premier League opponent. But I think some of these youngsters are good enough to take on Derby County. That's why we've picked them. Obviously, some of our big boys, we want to rest for the map. I mean, we're the underdogs. Really? I don't think we're the underdogs at all. That's a very strange one. Derby County, obviously, newly promoted from the championship. So I don't quite get that quote that we're the underdogs, unless I've been really stupid and picked a terrible team here today. And that's what the pundits seem to think. But I don't think we're the underdogs at all. Connor Cody, Pat Mayer. I think, to be honest, the media just, media just seem to underestimate us and again that whole form is temporary class is permanent thing you we're obviously a good team we finished fourth last year we're, we're up in fourth this year the media though just seem to underestimate us and to be honest I'm quite happy with that early corner from uh, Russell Lee but it doesn't really come to anything I'm hoping we can stick a few past Derby today it'd be nice for our youngsters the likes of, of Russell Lee McNaughton to Made to get on the score sheet. To be fair, um, Sam, Atkins still, Sam Atkinson's still fairly young, of course. Lorenzo's young as well, but Errol McNaughton with a beautiful strike there. Great to see. Errol McNaughton scores on his debut for Everton. That is brilliant. He's been a player that the youth coaches, David Unsworth in particular, has been knocking on my door and saying, you know, you want to give this lad a go in the first team. And if he does much like that, it might be, so, it might be that he becomes at least a temporary fixture in the first team as a backup player. I was talking in the previous episode that we do need a little bit of backup and we need some depth players. And some of these players, the likes of McNaughton and Russell Lee, 
if they play well in these games, can certainly provide that bit of depth. And they're only going to get better if they're exposed to the first team. So maybe some of these players don't need to go out and loan. Maybe they have got a place um, as backups for the first team. But let's see how they get on. Let's not uh, talk too soon. That could have just been an early goal. And Derby might go and score about six. But a good save from Casco. He uh, punches it away and puts it out for a corner. I'll tell you what is a bit sad. Wolves are down in the relegation zone. My f former employer's Wolves. Really sad. Gareth Southgate's been sacked. They've employed some former Italian footballer. I'm, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic here. I'm not going to say, it's Gattuso or somebody like that. No, it, it's someone I've never heard of. And you know when you, they just make appointments that make you go, what the hell have they bought him in for? A bit like when Wolves bought in Walter Zenger. 16 clubs in 18 years, you know, least said. And I don't know why they sacked Gareth Southgate. Very, very strange. But it looks like Wolves could go down this year. And it's been, I suppose, five or six years now since we took them to that fifth place finish. But really disappointed to see him in that position. Never nice to see your former employers doing badly. Michael Tiel puts the ball forward to L Lorenzo. Kenneth Taylor out to Kenny. Uh, I was going to say Kenneth Tiel then. Uh, McNaughton, what can he do? Tiel puts the ball centrally, but... A bit of a poor pass, I suppose you could say, but Gutierrez not really wise to that. Can Derby County go on the counter-attack now? Bird, Gutierrez makes a good sliding tackle, and Lawrence makes an excellent sliding tackle there, does Henry Lawrence. He's not a youngster, to be fair, is Lawrence. I think he's 26 now, but he is the perfect depth player. He can play anywhere across the defence and can also play midfield as well. Lorenzo makes it 2-0, but that is most certainly going to be offside. No doubt about that. And I wish, to be honest, that... FM didn't show these highlights because they are quite a regular occurrence. I'd say we get one at least every episode that we do. And it's just inevitable it's going to be disallowed. It, it's quite a way offside. But it, it seems that Derby aren't offering much. We are controlling the game. It's looking good at the moment. I'd like to make it 2-0 going into the second half. But let's see. I'll take 1-0. But 1-0 is never really all that secure. Seems Russell Lee, McNaughton. McNaughton's man of the match at the moment. No surprise being the goal scorer. Uh, most pundits usually go for the for the goal scorer as their man of the match, but good save from Casco from short distance. Suppose you could say that the Everton man, uh, the Derby man should have done better there. Casco with the ball out, um, Atkinson knocks knocks it on to Lorenzo. Lorenzo tries and almost because for the shoot on sight approach. Don't know why he just didn't try and work the ball round the defenders there. Bird on the ball for Derby. Ishmael Gutierrez wins it back, hoofs the ball up for Lorenzo, and he seems to be struggling up there a little bit. Um, Christian Bielik, I know who that is, former Arsenal youngster, puts a ball through to Rodriguez. Brian Rodriguez scores. We've been caught napping there a little bit. That is a bit disappointing. I'm going to tell the lads we demand a bit more from them because we fell to sleep a bit there. And if you look at it, Derby are actually starting to come more and more into this match now. So if we're not careful, I mean, A, we don't want to replay. With the, with the amount of fixtures we want, we've got, we don't want to replay. But that being said, we want to win this in 90 minutes. I'd have thought this is a team that was good enough to do so. Russell Lee is a bit tired and he's got a bit of an injury. So we'll bring Robin van der Berg on for him. Um, not for McNaughton, sorry. He's playing very well. And we'll put Lorenzo in centre attacking midfielder as a shadow striker. And we'll also bring on Lewis Bate for... We'll bring him off for Kenny Taylor, but we'll swap Bate and Gutierrez around. Because we had a whole moan with Bate at the start of the season. Oh, I want to play as a Mazzala. Okay, all right, fine. Strange some players are. Ten minutes to go here. It looks like this episode's not going to be true too great unless we can nick a, a late goal here. And as I said, I really, really don't want to replay. Really don't want to replay. But again, I don't want to lose. So it, it's a fine balance, I suppose. It is. It's a fine balance. Go very attacking. Have uh, Casco as a sweeper keeper on attack. But don't go too stupid about it. We'll go very attacking. Try and push for this late goal. But, again, we've not been great today. And I don't think you can blame that on our youngsters. We've got two minutes to go. Can we get a late goal to avoid another fixture? Or will it be Derby that caused a bit of a shock? Lorenzo. Lorenzo on the edge of the box. Shoots. Don't really know what that was all about. Derby hoofed the ball out. Surely not. Brown, he's through on goal. I think I'm doomed in the cup this year. I really do. I think I'm doomed in the cup competitions in FM. We're out the FA Cup. <laughs> well, that's a shocker. Really is. I know we went very attacking. I appreciate that, but um, that's disappointing. 
That is disappointing. Well, I guess it avoids a few games for us, but, you know, it, it's not good enough, that isn't. It's not good enough at all. Derby County actually won the FA Cup last year. Hey, eh? Look at that. Derby County apparently... No, that's a glitch in the game, isn't it? I was about to say, Derby County definitely didn't win the FA Cup last year, but that is annoying. Again, it doesn't do much for our... Uh, momentum either really two losses in a row and going into that run of Liverpool and Man City that makes things tricky that's disappointing that is we should have held on to that really should have done hmm. I don't think I did anything wrong there either okay well I'm just going to have to shrug that off another FA Cup exit I guess we go next year oh well Okay, Champions League, first knockout round, first leg we've got against PSG. We'll come back for that. We'll probably come back for that in the game against probably Newcastle. Um, and then after that again, we'll probably come back for the PSG second leg. Really, a lot of these games, West Brom, Newcastle, Tottenham will be tough. But Brighton, Leeds, Watford and Derby, we should be winning those games. So we should be starting to get a bit of a positive run going in the Premier League. But that is a, that's, a, that's a poor day at the office, both in the league and, and in the FA Cup there. Disappointing, but... We won the Merseyside derby at uh, Goodison. If we can go and win it at Anfield, that certainly helps us out. But based on the last two games, we wouldn't be too hopeful. Let's just hope we're camera shy, eh? If you enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment your thoughts as well and subscribe for regular Football Manager 2021 content. But until the next time, I've been TIJ Gaming. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now.